Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa and today we are picking back up on this t-shirt quilt that I'm making. And this is a whole series and so I'll put a link to the playlist if you're just now joining us. To all of the videos up to this point and future videos will be in this playlist. You'll find that playlist in the description box below. Today we're going to be working on this top border together in this video. We're going to be using a combination of t-shirts, t-shirt logos, and the June Taylor Color Fast fabric sheets. And these are for the inkjet printer. And all of the steps have been done to prepare the pictures. She's already sent me all of these pictures printed on the fabric. And if you would like to see the process, it is quite a, a long video. <laughs> it's one of my first videos on my channel. And it is pretty long, but I go through all of the steps that you need to do to print your pictures on the fabric and setting the pictures, heat setting, and all of that fun stuff. All of that's already been done, but if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description box below for that as well. Today we're just going to get started cutting and assembling this top border. So you can see this is the diagram and the graph that she sent me. And uh, I sent her a four inch grid to map out her quilt. And I ended up using a two inch grid because we modified some of her blocks. And so I've transferred everything over to this grid, which is a two inch grid. And I'm going to bring you in closer so that you get a better idea of how we're going to approach piecing all of these pieces and these pictures together up here. Now that we're a little bit closer, I'm hoping that you can see everything pretty well. We're going to go over all of these little pieces. And remember, this is the 4-inch grid. This is what I sent her to map out her quilt. And we're actually using the 2-inch grid. And what that means is that each one of these little tiny squares that you see represents a finished 2-inch by 2-inch block. So when we start mapping out our pieces, keep in mind that when we cut our pieces, we'll actually add a half inch on the width and the length. That'll give us our seam allowance. But when it's sewn into the quilt, it'll finish at whatever size that you draw onto your grid. So for me, it eliminates a lot of the math and the confusing, how big should I cut this piece and how big should I cut that piece? I just draw it in right on my grid and it's going to tell me how big my piece needs to be. So the only real math that I'll be doing today is really converting her pieces from the 4-inch grid to the 2-inch grid. So let's take a look at this top border. And today we are working in this video on this top border. And I just drew in a seam right here. Because this whole section is what we are putting together and will be added after the sides are attached. We have not made these sides yet, but we're just going to start and assemble this top piece here. The side borders, you can see it comes all the way down. I will piece together just like this. So this whole section here from the top of the center to the bottom of the center will be the right border and the left border. And then this section here will be the bottom. And I'm hoping to bring you along uh, a video for each one. We'll see how time permits. But I'd really love to show you, because so many people have asked, how do you sew in the pictures into your quilts? And I think because we're going through a whole process of printing pictures onto fabric, that it makes it more confusing than it actually needs to be because this is just fabric and you would sew it into a quilt just like if you bought a fat quarter and cut a piece out of it and sewed it into your quilt. The only difference being is that you've created your own graphics or your own design on the fabric. So we're going to go ahead and walk through that phase when we get to it. And the first thing I want to do is start, oops, <laughs> I was drawing on the wrong one. I need to throw this one away. All right. This is the modified version. 
because we increased the size of this top row. I need to just get rid of that other sheet because I've done that several times now. Okay, this is the top border piece we're working on. So I need to convert her pieces from 4 inch uh, measurements to 2 inch measurements. And because 4 is divisible by 2, that won't be difficult. And I want to keep, as much as I can, her original layout. I do think, because we've moved some things around within the center of the quilt, that we might have to modify this a little bit, but I'd like to keep it as original to her layout as possible. And so, let's go ahead and start mapping these pieces out. I have a stack of shirts that we're going to use in this top border, and I need to go through and figure out which one of the pictures we'll actually use, and I'll do that off camera here in just a minute. But let's take a look at what she has here. I know that over top of this block here, in this first row, she wants one of her gray shirts with the uh, logo on it. Let's convert this really quick. One, two, three, four, times four is 16. One, two, three, times four is 12. So I need to mark out a section on my grid that is 16 by 12 to allow for this shirt here. So now we're counting in 2 inch increments. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whoops. And then 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So just like that, that will be her shirt right there. Let me bring that in. So when we cut this piece, we're actually going to cut it 16 and a half inches wide and 12 and a half inches long. So when I get to that shirt, I can stabilize that section of her shirt and cut out her block at 16 and a half by 12 and a half. I also know that she has the exact same size, I don't know why I put eight there, shirt right here in this upper right hand corner. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just like that, there's space for that shirt. So there's our two largest pieces in this border, and all of the other ones are going to fit in. We have one, two, three blocks that she wants to cut. One, two, three, twelve and a half by eight and a half. So those will all be the same and we can move those in here. Let's see, that's going to be eight by eight. One, two, three, four. That's that shirt. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one is going to be eight inches. This one is, whoopsie, we're starting to run out of space here. <laughs> So some things will need to be moved around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm thinking that you get the idea of how the grid system works, figuring out how big your logos need to be and how many pieces you have and what size you need to cut them to fit them all in. So let me just do some playing with her grid and figure out how we can fit all of these pieces into this border. One of the great things about using these grids is that you can print off an endless 
number of copies in case you mess up. I've already messed up three. <laughs> but I finally uh, came to this layout and this will fit and accommodate all of the shirt logos that we wanted to fit in this top border and it'll incorporate lots of pictures. So these little squares where you see the dot is actually a picture that's printed on the fabric. All of these other ones that have writing in them are going to be the t-shirt logos. So let me show you. One of the things that you might have to deal with when you print photos onto fabric to incorporate into your quilt. These are all of the photos. Everything with a yellow sticky is what we're going to incorporate into this top border. So that everything... I tried to fit as many photos as I could. We've got almost all of these. But let me show you something. Let's pull this sheet. These all came printed to me by my client and the colors are all perfect. And we even have little captions below the picture that I want to keep with the picture. I'm thinking that's why that's there so that you could always go back and look at the date. So to fit this photo, this one on top, I figured out that we could have a finished block at six inches wide and four inches long. So let me show you with the ruler what that looks like. So right in this square here is six inches, uh, sorry, four inches down and then six inches over and that will include the little caption. That is the finished block. Remember, we are going to try to sew this into our quilt. To do that, we have to add half an inch on both the width and the length of your block. So let me see, six and a half, four and a half. All of this is seam allowance that I'm missing. I'm either going to cut into this photo because there's not half an inch here to allow a seam allowance for both photos, to use both photos. And plus, because the picture, there was two pictures printed, they are very close to the edge of the paper. And I hope I'm explaining this so that it makes sense. Finished size-wise, it makes perfect sense because they are both six by four. However, I am missing quite a bit for my seam allowance. And so, <laughs> I've been sitting here brainstorming because all of the pictures are pretty much printed like this so that we could incorporate so many photos. I'm going to have to come up with a creative way without cutting too much of the photos off to incorporate my seam allowance so that it fits correctly into my grid. Let's just take, for example, this is a six by four. Right here is a six by four space. It's going to join to this block and this block and that block. And I need a seam allowance. And so I've been brainstorming how to do this. And I'm thinking almost instead of doing a traditional quarter inch seam, I'm actually going to use a piece of her leftover t-shirt material, just a blank piece. She's marked on a lot of them that uh, the pinks are her favorite color and so that if we have to use extra bits of the t-shirts to use the pink ones. Maybe I will fill this in with a blank piece of pink fabric from her shirts and then applique this onto that square. And I'm thinking that's going to be the best way to fit these pictures because I hadn't really thought about it. I just opened up the package and saw all the pictures and the print quality was fabulous. 
And I was not thinking about seam allowances or how big I was going to cut these pictures out. <laughs> and so, hmm, I'm still thinking about it a little bit, but I'm thinking that that's going to be the best way to do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and start putting some stabilizer on all of these t-shirts and cutting these blocks out. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be thinking about how to incorporate the pictures because I don't think they're going to sew in like you traditionally would do it because of the size. That's what I'm thinking. So that's one thing to consider if you are planning on printing your own photos is you might want to crop your photos down a little bit so that if you're fitting two on a page just like this that you're going to allow space in between and space on the side for a quarter inch seam allowance. That way you can sew them in. Totally not my client's fault. She's never made a quilt before. That's why she's paying me to do it. And so, you know, I totally understand, you know, why there isn't the extra uh, fabric in between the photos. And, of course, why wouldn't you want your photos large enough so that you could really see the photo? So we're going to make this work, and I'm going to show you when I get to this part how I plan to make this work and I'm still thinking about it but it's going to be fabulous either way whether we sew in the photo or we applique the photo and maybe doing it this way will give you an alternative if if you run into the same situation uh, then you'll know what to do so <laughs> let me go ahead and warm up my iron and I'm going to stabilize my shirts and get them cut out and then we're going to address this here we are. I have all of my t-shirt logos all stabilized and cut out. Let's go take a look at the design board and see what this actually looks like. Okay, here we are. These are all the t-shirt pieces that will go in the border. And we're going to fill in with pictures. To mix things up, I might shift the... Uh, the letters, the three blocks that are 10 by 8 up and down just to randomly move things around and shift the photos down below those blocks. We'll see. But that's where we are right now and I'm going to go ahead and stabilize the t-shirt material that we are going to fuse the pictures to and do some applique work. So we will meet back at that point. I'm back now from cutting a bunch of four and a half by six and a half inch fabric squares just like this. They have the stabilizer on them and these are extra bits of her t-shirts. So uh, I actually figured out that I can show you two different ways of attaching the photos into your quilt. The first way is going to be the traditional way. This block here measures four and a half from here to here and six and a half from left to right. It's going to actually go in the quilt just like this in one of these places here that are arranged six inches across and four inches down. So you can see in order to get the four and a half by six and a half, including your seam allowance, I cut off a small portion of the picture that was right next to it. And of course this was the edge of the paper. Let's take a look at that. When it is sewn into the quilt, we're going to lose the toppest portion of this photo in the seam allowance. And when we come down here and we do this seam allowance, let's see, there we go. This lower portion, the other part of the picture, is going to be included in the seam allowance that's underneath of this block. So we will have a little bit of white showing underneath the photo, but that's okay. And it's six and a half inches from left to right. So we will be able to sew this block just like we're sewing our t-shirts together. It's just a piece of fabric 
with a picture printed on it. The other way so that I could use this photo that we've cut and because there was not enough fabric if you measure a piece of paper from left to right it's only eight and a half inches and if you have two four inch pieces of fabric that's not going to give you a seam allowance to be able to use both pictures without cutting one of them. So on this one which was right here <laughs> I've trimmed the photo and to show you better what I'm talking about I went ahead with a heat erasing pen so when I press this these little marks are going to disappear and I've marked the seam allowance all the way around the edges of this block. That's going to represent where it is sewn in to the other pieces around it. So what I did is I trimmed the photo smaller so that it fits right inside this block just like this. So now I can either use like a heat and bond light product on the back or I'm going to use some Elmer's glue because uh, I really love the heat and bond light products but we're already using t-shirt material which is already thicker than normal fabric and it's stabilized. So I don't want to add a lot of stiffness to this block and so I'll use the Elmer's glue all around the perimeter of this photo and just glue baste this right into place and heat set and dry the glue so I can bring it to the sewing machine. There will be no wet glue at the sewing machine. <laughs> and I'll do a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch all the way around the perimeter of this photo treating this photo like it is raw edge applique. Once that's done and sewn into our quilt what you'll have is a block with a picture in it and you'll have a small little border of pink surrounding the picture. So when we get to that part where this is sewn in I'll bring you back and I'll show you what this block looks like and I'll show you what this block looks like sewn in just like that. I'm really hoping that this makes sense uh, and uh, that you'll be able to see you treat this just like fabric and you can treat it just like applique as well. I just got done spending some time at the sewing machine and what I did was a loose satin stitch around all of the raw edge pictures that we've cut just like this. I did use a tearaway stabilizer and for my machine I had to reduce the tension down to a minus three. Let me show you why. Because I wanted to avoid any puckering. See this? I was checking out my stitches. And I wanted everything to lay nice and flat. So this was out, this was without stabilizer, and you could see how it puckered. I did not want any, any of that puckering. So I brought in some lightweight tearaway stabilizer. And look how nice and flat those seams are. So I went around each one of the blocks that has the raw edge pictures, just like this. And the, the stabilizer has been removed. And this is nice and soft. I did not use the heat and bond light on this. I just used the Elmer's glue just like I do uh, for a lot of the freezer paper applique using Elmer's glue. Everything was nice and dry when I brought it over to the sewing machine. And so this is ready to be sewn into the quilt. So I have some that are like this. And then I have some that are cut to four and a half by six and a half. And remember we talked about some of this was going to disappear in the seam allowance. So all of my blocks are ready to go and this is where we are. This is the whole top border and all of the pieces. The little pieces with the dots, those are the pictures. And then the ones with the writing, those are the t-shirt logos. So you can see by using the grid where all of our seams are going to be. Let's see, I'll use maybe this blue pen will show up. You can see right here that we have four pieces that will make a larger block. So here's a seam right here. We'll join these two pieces together and we'll join these two pieces together. And then we'll join the four pieces together right in the middle and this will make one block. 
It'll be very easy to attach to this one because we're just going to have one long seam right here. And then this will be a large block. Then we'll set that aside because we have some more smaller pieces. These two will go together right in this seam here. And then that will be a unit that we can attach to the right of this. So you can see how easily you can see all of your seams. This now will be one large unit. We'll set that aside and we'll move over to the right. And you can see this large block here and two blocks directly above it. We'll join these two blocks and then we'll join them to this larger block right here. That then will be one unit and we'll join it to this larger unit and so on and so on. And so you can see using grid paper or graph paper how easy it is to know exactly where your seams are going to be and how to attach all of your blocks. That's why I love these grids so much. Now this is the two inch grid. So remember each one of these blocks is going to finish at two and two inches. And I'm going to go ahead and sit down at the sewing machine and sew all of this together. Just like I showed you, I'm going to start right over here in the left hand corner and attach these together and work my way all the way down to here. Now you can see right here is the only small little odd piece. That's going to be a two and a half by four and a half inch piece that we're going to fit right in there and we'll use one of the pink colors from one of her favorite shirts right in that piece. Everything else will have a logo or a picture. So if you have any questions, jump down to the comment section. I would love to hear from you. I'm going to go ahead and do some sewing just like I just showed you and we'll come back when this border is all together. Here we are part of the way in. I like to color in my blocks as I go along. It helps me keep track of where I am and the progress I've made so far. So I've attached everything that you see in orange is right here. Just like that. We're sewing in the blocks. So here's the example. You can see this picture we cut to four and a half by six and a half. The right side of the photo, the seam allowance took in part of the picture and then uh, this was the other side. So you do see a little small section of white there, but I think that that looks fine. And then this is the raw edge applique, just like that. So we'll have some photos that are like that and some photos that are like that. And this is where we are. I wanted to show you this part. I'm sorry if my hands are shaking. I'm trying to set the camera down so it's not shaking so much. Everything in orange is put together and we are here in this section here. You can see above this block comes into the middle of the block above it. So what I'm going to do is actually go until these seams meet straight from edge to edge. So that means assembling these two pieces and then attaching these as three units. Separately I'll attach these top photos. There's four of them there. Oh, I'm sorry. And then once I have two units, the photo unit and the t-shirt logo unit, then I can attach them in this seam that runs horizontal between those two. And then this will become one unit that I can attach to the rest. Just trying to show you how the grid can actually save you some headaches and confusion when piecing smaller pieces like this in a t-shirt quilt. Okay, here we are. It's the end of my work day. <laughs> and this top border is done. You can see all the pieces fit together just perfectly. So we'll go up really close so you can see everything. These little bits of the photos will be 
uh, in the seam allowance, and so those will be gone once we attach the borders. And that also goes for these two photos at the very top. The little small bits of the other photos that were cut off will go underneath the binding, and so you won't see that. And we're moving over. and all the way over to the left side of the quilt. So I just pinned the center up just so you get an idea of how it's going to all tie in together. Just like that. So the next thing I'll do is work on the left and right side borders and then the bottom and then we can attach all of these borders to the center part of the quilt. Okay, I've enjoyed having you with me during my work day. If you have any questions I'd love to help, you can ask them down below. You can also jump over to the Creative Crew group on Facebook. A link for that will be in the description box. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.